lot to cover this morning with our first guest, White House Communications Director Kate Battingfield. Kate, thank you very much for joining us on this Sunday. I want to start with those images uh, from the Donna uh, Detention Center. I mean, obviously not acceptable, horrific, uh, not acceptable by the definition put forward by the president himself. What is the immediate problem to address this, and, and when will it be fixed? Well, the president is working as quickly as possible to address the situation. He's using every possible avenue to ensure that we're getting these kids out of Border Patrol custody and into HHS facilities as quickly as possible. You've seen him just this week announce that Fort Bliss, for example, and Lackland Air Force Base are going to open up beds to bring these kids in out of the Border Patrol facilities and into facilities that are uh, better for temporary housing for them. But that's a temporary solution. It's a temporary solution. Ultimately, what we need to do is address the root causes of migration. It's something that President Biden did when he was vice president. He spent time in the Northern Triangle countries that people are migrating from, working to try to address the, uh, the lack of infrastructure, the lack of programs like, for example, girls and boys clubs that allow these kids to be somewhere safe in their home country. So you saw last week he asked Vice President Harris to take on dealing with uh, the work and the diplomacy that's necessary in the Northern Triangle to prevent people from making this journey in the first place. That's the most important thing we can do to try to stem the tide. And the other thing I would say, John, is, you know, what we see from the data is that these surges are cyclical. They're cyclical. They're not the result of one administration's policies or another administration's policies. They're the result of, for example, uh, uh, weather disasters in, um, in the region. They're the result of people fleeing poverty and violence. So we saw spikes in 2014. We saw them in 2019 when the Trump administration had perhaps the cruelest imaginable policies in place, family separation, to try to deter people from coming, and they still came. So this is a cyclical issue. It's one that President Biden has said is unacceptable to him, and he's working very quickly uh, to address it. But, but, Kate, there is something different here, and that is the unaccompanied minors. I mean, we already have a record number of unaccompanied minors in U.S. Uh, custody. Uh, and in just a single day last week, there were a thousand additional um, minors who uh, were, were caught capturing, you know, who, who were brought into U.S. custody coming across the border. Uh, th these are record numbers already, and the seasonal surge that you're talking about is only just beginning. This is not, I mean, in terms of unaccompanied minors, this is not the same as it's been. This is, this is worse, is it not? Well, no. It, and if you look at the numbers, but the it's numbers, not. But, but that doesn't mean it's not a serious. But that doesn't mean. But John, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, but but I'm saying these are already record numbers of unaccompanied minors, a thousand in a single day. And it's already an record numbers. It's not the same. And the pres, and the president, and the, it is this. It is the same. These are the same kinds of surges that we've seen. But look, the the important thing here is not a question of whether it's the same or not. The important thing here is the president has said this is unacceptable to him and he's working to address it. And the way we do that is by temp finding temporary shelter for these kids who are coming without an adult, and, uh, and also by speeding up the process, by, by ensuring that the process is more efficient so that kids are able to move out of these Border Patrol facilities into temporary uh, housing and then be put into, uh, the, into immigration processes. That's what we're working to try to do as quickly as possible. But I think it's also important to be clear that our policy hasn't changed. The vast majority of people who arrive at our border, we're turning away under Title 42, under a health code uh, uh, that uh, requires us to or allows us to turn people away uh, in, in this period of COVID. So people should understand that the vast majority of people who show up at our border, we're turning away. For these unaccompanied children who arrive, the president is working as quickly as possible to move them into facilities that are acceptable, uh, that are uh, in and of themselves short-term uh, short -term solutions, and he's working to rebuild our system uh, uh, of diplomacy in the Northern Triangle so that people are not fleeing these countries, coming to the United States. That's how we ultimately solve the problem. Uh, Congressman uh, Henry Cuellar, who is a Democrat and also somebody very familiar with that border region, has said that the administration should show images, should show uh, a video of people being turned away at the border, to send that message, a visual representation of that message, that most people are being turned away. Is that something uh, that the administration is considering doing? Well, I think the president has been very clear the border is closed. He has said so unequivocally many, many times. And we're working, our State Department is working to show 
uh, media in country in the countries in the Northern Triangle that make very clear that the border is not open and that coming to make this incredibly dangerous journey now and coming to our border um, is not this is not the moment to do it. This is not the time to do it. The border is closed. But you know what I would say more broadly is you know this is also an issue that Democrats and Republicans have historically shared a desire uh, to work on. And so this is a moment where, you know, you, you talked about Republicans going to visit these facilities. You know, this is a moment for Republicans to come to the table, to work with us on comprehensive immigration reform. President Biden sent a bill to Congress on his first day in office addressing some of the broken pieces of our immigration system and working okay. to, for example, create a pathway to citizenship for uh, for 11 million people in this country. So th there are opportunities to work together and constructively. That's what the American people want us to do. That's what Pre President Biden wants to do. So, so Kate, I, I want to turn to Georgia's uh, new restrictions, uh, the new restrictive voting law down there. The president, obviously, harshly uh, critical, many others as well. Um, we, we see talk from Major League Baseball potentially moving the All-Star game, which is scheduled for this summer in Atlanta, uh, as a form of protest. Also, there's even been calls uh, for the Masters to be, remo to, be, uh, uh, to, to, to be moved out of Augusta. Uh, does, does the administration uh, support these kind of moves by the sports and entertainment industry to, to effectively boycott Georgia uh, because of this? Well, I think President Biden has been pretty clear how he feels about this legislation. He called it sick. He called it un-American. He said that it runs counter to everything that we stand for as Americans. He believes that we need to pass the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. This is something that he's going to push to ensure uh, that we're signing into law. So I think he's been very clear. Uh, he believes this is un-American. It's unacceptable. And he's also said, you know, if you have the best ideas, put them on the table and let people vote. There's the, the idea that you need to suppress the vote or prevent people in this country from voting in order to win. I mean, it, it truly runs counter to everything that we believe as Americans. So he's been very clear how he feels about this. Obviously, the private sector and private companies will make decisions on their own. But he's been clear this is entirely unacceptable to him. And he's going to work to ensure that Congress is, is passing laws that protect people's right to vote. I mean, one thing that is that is truly concerning about this is these efforts are entirely party line. These are Republicans. These are partisan efforts. Uh, but even the, the effort in, in Congress to try to combat this is entirely without Republican support. I want to show you something that Joe Manchin said about the effort in Congress uh, to ensure voting rights. He said, pushing through legislation of this magnitude on a partisan basis may garner short-term benefits, but it will inevitably only exacerbate the distrust that millions of Americans harbor against the U.S. government. So d does, I mean, obviously Joe Biden ran for president talking about bringing the country together. This seems to be a really tough one. Does he find, is he going to be able to find a way to get Republicans, Republicans in Congress uh, on board in a bipartisan effort uh, to deal with how we conduct our elections? Well, this is a question for the Republicans, isn't it, John? I mean, well, it's, it, it's the a ones question for it, well, 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 it's, well, it's, a, it's a question. It's a question for, for for President Biden on you know what is his plan to try to you know bring Republicans on board to this, or, or are they a lost cause? I mean, how, how does the White House view this? That's I would say that's a question for them. That President Biden has been very clear that this is something he believes needs to happen. You know, we there's a lot of conversation about how this legislation could move forward in the Senate and discussion of what we need to do to the filibuster. But, you know, I thought Senator Warnock uh, uh, was right on about this uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago when he said, you know, we wouldn't have to be talking about the filibuster if uh, Republicans were talking about supporting voting rights. So this is a question for Republicans. Are they going to look their constituents in the eye and say, I spent my time in Washington trying to make it harder for you to cast your vote? Is that really the argument that they want to take back to their constituents? That's a question for them. President Biden has been very, very clear. He believes that we need to move forward with this legislation, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the For the People Act. We need to protect people's right to vote. Right to vote. It, is, it is a sacred right in this country. It's something that he intends to fight for. And if Republicans are going to choose uh, not to come along, then that's something they're going to have to answer uh, to their voters for. And, and I think that uh, they're not going to like the answer that they get back. All right, Kate Bedingfield, White House Communications Director, thank you for joining us this morning.
Thank you for having me, John. Appreciate it. All right. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.